Hey, this is a little um, little precursor. I just want to add a little tag to the start of this episode to apologize. I think my audio was a little... was maybe set up very carefully when we recorded this kind of surprise mini-episode, so I apologize for the quality of my audio track. Uh, it will be addressed in the future, but until then, you're going to hear a lot of um, hear a lot of peaking audio. So uh, I guess I guess enjoy. Uh, that's enough for me. On with the episode. Madison is paralyzed by shocking visions of grisly murderers, and her torment worsens as she discovers that these waking dreams are in fact terrifying realities. Ooh. This episode of Stabby Stabby is something new. Welcome to Stabby Stabby Presents Fresh Cuts. We watched Malignant 2021. Stabby Stabby. Hey, and uh, welcome to uh, this kind of special episode of Stabby Stabby. It's the first in what we're going to see sticks around. I don't know. We're, we're not professionals. <laughs> we're just doing whatever the fuck we want. So we're going to try this thing called Fresh Cuts, where if there's a new release movie that we think is exciting or notable in some way, we will do a quick, short little episode and talk about it as a group. Uh, hey, Greg Herrick. Hey. How, how are you guys doing? Hey, yeah, well, yeah, I'm doing all right. Got my, uh, I'm ready for football season. Yeah. Just starting this weekend. I got my uh, Rebel Hill uh, triple dry hopped double IPA version of Bleed Green called Bleed Greener. And I'm really excited to drink that and talk about Malignant. Hell yeah. Wow. What what percentage is that, Greg? I think it's 8.2. All right. That's or 8.8, something like that. I don't say it on the can. You know, that's a good partner for my uh, Purple Monkey dishwasher. It's a chocolate peanut butter uh, portal. Port, portal 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 of happiness <laughs> the portal <laughs> <laughs> by evil genius which is also eight and a half percent i will join you i will join you on this roller coaster nice i'm just drinking some water tonight fella hell yeah he's our hydro the, homie yeah i was at a neighborhood fire pit last night and hit it pretty heavy so i'm <clears throat> hydrating it up nice yeah yeah and this isn't normal recording night so yeah, we can't strange. hold we can't hold you hold it against you not drinking. So. Uh, thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Greg. Greg, you're a shitty friend. <laughs> Listen, if I'm drinking, everyone should be. Yeah, you're not a shitty. You're a good friend. <laughs> I'm Dr. Florence Weaver was found brutally murdered in her home this morning. Did you know her? No, but I saw her die. I'm seeing things. I'm seeing murders. As they're happening. Hello? All right, so I guess to get into this, I want to ask you guys a, uh, a question about this movie. Um, I got a little quote I want to read for you. Andrew Barker, he's the film critic for Variety. He wrote of this movie that the director tosses elements of everything from classic 70s giallo to 80s soap operas, late 90s action blockbusters, and buddy cop comedies, and psychological thrillers into a big messy pressure cooker and ends up with a film that's like nothing else on his resume. It's hard to say whether a film this bonkers, quote, works or not, uh, but it's impossible not to admire both the craft and the extravagant bad taste before uh, behind its go-for-broke energy. Uh, so obviously Andrew Walker was kind of a fan of the batshit insanity that's going on in this movie. And I wanted to ask you guys, uh, do you think that the batshit insanity worked for it? Or did you kind of get left behind when it went full steam ahead? It worked for me. I, I freaking <laughs> loved it. I thought it was awesome. I had a really good time with it. And I, and um, we've been watching so many, like, uh, how to put this, like Z-grade movies that... <laughs> that even, you know, the complaints about this one, it still is stellar, in my opinion. Yeah, it was freaking great and weird and unexpected. Yeah, when it when it pops off, uh, it, it goes for broke and it's, it is one of the like most fun horror movies that I've watched in, in a long time. Um, it definitely decides to not take itself too seriously. Um, you know, I, I did have a, a couple minor quibbles with... 
Um, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm so kind surprised. Of the violence uh, that they they had, um, like it was it was good. It was gory. Um, I, I'm glad they didn't cut away from from everything. Um, but it was ooh, it was a lot of it was poor CGI. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But but I can I can look past that. Uh, that's why I said it's just a minor quibble. I think you know it, it, it's probably not a giant budget, so they they did what they could. But um, but yeah, it it gets insane. It was interesting. Uh, it's interesting what you what you read about where it was saying that it has like. 70s um horror and and like 80s action and buddy cop like i get I, when when I, this uh, movie was first announced i remember them saying it's like oh james wan's gonna do a giallo and i didn't get a ton of giallo oh really yeah i mean i like the psychic link thing is is very giallo but that's about it for oh, me man but what about a the... lot of it felt very conjuring what like, about especially, the lighting? like all the house stuff the yeah, lighting and the yeah. score and the like the really really dense like atmosphere i i definitely saw a lot of giallo when i was watching it but hmm. yeah. i thought the beginning almost like the first 30 minutes felt very giallo to me it was like reds um there's the mystery killer that you're trying to figure out who's like in shadow um there's this this the, the string score that supported it and then it just turned into a totally different movie that i was completely <laughs> okay with i was like that's fine yeah i Let's guess i guess different. i think i'm I just think of Giallo's a little differently, but ev- everything you mentioned, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I-, I think I was looking at it for like story beats more than mm. aesthetics, gotcha. but yeah. um, you know, the the killer didn't ha- you didn't only see like a, a gloved hand, you know, right? Um, and right, that's right. that's very Giallo, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm 100 percent on board. Uh, just like uh, you guys were both saying, I had a blast with it. I, every time I did kind of start drifting towards looking at my watch, like once the creeping around the house stuff started transforming into much much more violent <laughs> plot beats i got like all wrapped up in it again um this was probably the most beautiful movie i've seen in a while i, yeah. I was like struck by the lighting there was there was this one shot where um our protagonist is with her sister in the bathroom and she's like i think she just had one of these violent visions and she's like puking into the toilet and her sister's there holding her hair back and they're having this conversation where like a big a um, bit of information is revealed and the camera is just creeping in towards the toilet and behind them there's this like glowing yellow like circle window that has this perfect beam of like pink light like mm. this shaft of light that just has them illumined like he made this vomiting in a toilet scene look like <laughs> something from the Sistine Chapel it was amazing I, I could not get over how beautiful this movie was how it was just so good on the eyes oh, I totally agree yeah, and I I watched it in uh, the 4K HDR on HBO Max, um, and the colors popped super well. Like it, it, it did look great. Yeah, there was. A, I know James Wan's like noted for this, but a lot of his transitions and camera work. Yeah, the way it was pretty like the zooming into like peepholes, and he takes you like inside the VHS player, inside the washing machine, and like just really cool inventive shots uh, that like kept me engaged. It's pretty cool. It's a rare horror movie that can use electronics as like a pretty major point in the movie. And it feel like it kind of works. Like mm-hmm. usually when somebody reaches for their cell phone in a horror movie, especially a modern horror movie, it's always like a little cringeworthy how they interact with tech. Never mm-hmm. feels authentic or whatever. But this movie just, it was so over the top and so bonkers that I wasn't even really paying attention to uh, like stuff that otherwise would make me cringe. It was just awesome. There was also this shot. I think her name's Madison. She's like running through the house. And there's this overhead yep. shot from room to room, and it's just transitioning from room to room to room. It was very like Hitchcock. It was awesome. It was really cool. Yeah, that shot was fantastic. It was beautifully done. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's probably hard to talk about this without getting into spoilers, so we should probably just get into spoilers. So, hey, uh, if you haven't seen this movie yet, it is in theaters and streaming on HBO Max. Um, when you stream it, I think the deal is if you shout at your TV that you heard about it on Stabby Stabby, we get money, so... Just do us a favor, shout at your TV. It will it will give us money. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm thought, not I joking. Thought, That's I thought you were going works. five star territory on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. So okay. All right. Spoilers coming up. He says his name is Gabriel. I think he's someone from my past. Uh, 
happy birthday. Whatever happened to you before you joined our family hurt you in a way that I can't even imagine. Stop saying that. Now it's time for spoilers. All right, so did the uh, plot twist work for you guys? Or actually, let me ask. Um, did, when going into this, I had heard from people that this was a plot twist movie. So kind of like M. Night's movies, where if somebody spoils the ending, like it kind of ruins the whole point of the movie. I was kind of blown away watching this, how little the plot twists really mattered. Like I, I just yep. really enjoyed the whole ride and I didn't think it built to any one giant twist. Uh, I, I don't know, how, how'd that, how'd that sound? What, what did you guys think about plot twists going into this movie? And do you think any of that mattered? It didn't really matter to me. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't read anything. I just saw the graphic come up on HBO Max. Um, so I had no idea what to expect. I didn't know there was a plot twist. I didn't, I just knew it was James Wan. Uh, nice. So I just kind of went in completely blind and uh, I think it worked because I just kind of went for the ride and the beginning was, you know, their first 30 minutes kind of slow and like standard James Wan and then it just went freaking insane. It was <laughs> awesome. Um, one, one thing I saw online um, uh, on Twitter, uh, somebody said that they, um, they, they figured out the twist literally during the opening like credits montage yeah so did i that's what, that's I, what I, I didn't like... either i'm i'm dumb as a brick with this stuff um so when they kind of revealed what's going on i was like oh well that's that's interesting and i guess i can see now you know what they revealed in the credits um that you could kind of put it all together right away but um like i said dumb as a brick didn't get it <laughs> <laughs> um but i actually i i like the twist um i'm glad it wasn't necessarily just like imaginary friend comes to life you know it was more cronenberg body horror yeah uh twist to it and when they showed for the first time when they showed emily sitting there and took the camera around back and yeah. you just saw the gabriel monster like i was cool as shit yeah, oh it was. it was awesome his little arms are moving back and forth or like <laughs> yeah. slap it in the in the air yeah it, it, it's it, it was a different take on like basket case right like where your evil twin is a is a killer well, that's what I was thinking for. I was like, oh, there's a basket case thing. And then her twin was separated from her and somehow like grew up. I didn't know it was inside her own body still. Yeah, you know, I, same. I thought it was like a separate entity, you know. I, I was trying to figure out like, how the hell did that thing grow to be like a full size human? Right, right. Yeah. Honestly, I was distracted by how fucking badass it was to see uh, the way the creature when it takes over the body it uses all the limbs backwards yeah so they have that that first chase sequence where you first see it really moving around in the in like the night like light with all the lights on the street you can actually see how it's running and shit so cool so creepy really really cool imagery yeah there's one yeah. point where it like knocks a wall down and does like crab walk like inside the wall <laughs> like real quick it's great yeah it was it, the, the one scene that I had kind of uh, issues with was basically like the Matrix violence scene in the uh, the police station, where the just the the CG uh, character of of mm -hmm. Gabriel slash Emily was it was just silly. It just didn't work. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The, the way it 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 was too fluid. Um. But but again, at least they weren't shying away from the like stabbings and and all that shit. Like that was. That was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, the second guy that got stabbed, the second doctor in his bed. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Uh, yeah. Man, that was brutal. And she was over top of him, like, sort of all contorted, and then just stabbed him, like, right in the face or right in the chest. Yeah. And they didn't cut away. It was nope. rough. Well, that was that was my biggest concern. So after uh, the, the husband dies at the beginning and you don't see it, and then after the first doctor dies and you don't see it, you just see, like, um, you know, the, the monster hitting her with the the uh, the trophy and blood spatter coming up mm -hmm. but you don't see the violence and i was like oh, are they just going to cut away from everything mm -hmm. um but then yeah that second doctor kill uh, in the bed was that was brutal and then from there i think they just showed pretty much everything yeah yeah that i mean maybe that's what made it more effective was like they just you were like ah, oh, they're gonna cut away and then it's just brutal i feel like if it wasn't for how over the top the violence and the action got like the like you said, the police station scene was almost like a different movie for a scene. Yeah, it really didn't fit a lot. But but like I don't give a shit about a single character in this movie. Like I didn't connect to any of the humans. I don't really remember their names that much. The only reason I enjoyed this movie as much as I did was it was fun as fuck to watch. Like I, I was just constantly surprised. I didn't know it was around, coming around the corner. 
It was just like a bowl of candy, and yeah. it was beautiful, and I, I loved it. I, I thought that was so much fun. That's how I felt. It was just, I was just completely entertained. Like, at that point, I was like, okay, now it's a comic book movie. Like, it's like, yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's like Dark Man, and now I'm, it, I'm rooting for Gabriel. He's like an anti-hero or something. Like, I just didn't care. I was just going for the ride. It was... You know what else was cool was the scene where um, you know the, the the woman's trapped in the attic the whole time and, and yeah mm -hmm. um, they're sort of like they're all uh, I don't know anybody's names I think I just watched it today so I don't know what any of the characters but <laughs> they're all in the living room like sort of decompressing she goes she like goes back in her mind and like conjures up all the stuff from her uh, childhood and then the, the woman in the attic frees herself and falls through in the middle of their conversation <laughs> it was so cool. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And that being the, like, it's such an over-the-top event, but, like, I, I feel like in a different movie it would have been a punchline, but here it, it lands her in jail. Like, so it, it was consequential and also funny and also startling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, great. I mean, I guess that's what James Wan is really good at, is consequential action and being entertaining to look at. Like, I, maybe, like, uh, do you think James Wan has out Michael Bay, Michael Bay at this point? Maybe for art, I, yeah. Probably. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I, I really wouldn't even equate it. No. Um, like he, he's James Wan isn't necessarily about spectacle over like quality. Um, I don't think his movies are necessarily like gold standard horror because they do rely on jump scares a lot. Um, but uh, Michael Bay is just, it's just mayhem, and you can't follow anything that's happening. You know what I mean? Like even in the the fight scenes, like the violent scenes in this movie, I, I could still follow oh, who was totally. where and, and what was mm. happening. You it's, know? it's not but the it, it, mangled mess of like a Transformers action yeah. sequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I I do think this movie fits our style actually really well because it's completely bonkers. Um, it's 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 insane. It's gory. The acting not that good. Um, <laughs> but like, and and the story's just like all over the place. But it was entertaining <laughs> that's really what i want from a movie um but uh yeah so that's why i when after i watched it i was like oh yeah like we should do an episode for this because um if this was made in the 80s this would be our bread and butter <laughs> yeah yeah i was getting i don't know if you guys said i was getting brian using the vibes from this like if he was, yeah totally you know had a, had a bigger budget and um at least maybe the second half when things started getting a little a little wild or maybe like a really bleak Wachowski siblings like thing, especially mm -hmm. with some of the ways the action was shot for sure. I did like the the line by the uh, the budget Wanda Sykes. She's like, uh, <laughs> she's like, uh, are you saying the killer looks like Sloth from Goonies? <laughs> After they did like the the illustration of him, that was pretty cool. That was funny. It would be an easy movie to pick apart. Like I I, I had to stop myself from thinking about like yeah. So so the the creature is attached to the woman, but when the creature takes over, he can use her body better. Like does, is she does she have super human strength is that what, yeah, what's I mean, going on yeah there, that's that's one of the problems <laughs> yeah i was she lifts the uh the medical equipment the bed off of her and is like i yeah. can do it because i it was me all along. they never really explain it you know yeah yeah, yeah I, know, when i was, was watching whole... that final scene in the hospital um like the hospital room itself all i could think about was like oh man if he did like a De Palma like screen split and you saw um, oh, yeah. like what, what like Gabriel was saying, but you're also seeing the uh, like reactions from Emily. Oh, that would have been Madison, cool. Whatever. Yeah. Um, that could have been like a really interesting uh, thing to do, like to see her trying to fight back, just kind of like visually, just through her face. That like, would have been, been cool. Could have been neat. Yeah. Such a difficult concept to pull off on screen, as well as they did too. Like every once in a while, there would be a wide shot of, and you would see the whole monster controlling the body, and you would just see this like. <laughs> the actress's like prosthetic face glued to the back of its head, just flopping <laughs> it, around. Yeah, it looked goofy as shit. But yeah, yeah, you know, it after it's torn limbs off of twenty police officers, you're just like, hell yeah! I just want to high five them, keep them going. <laughs> <laughs> Snapping like arms and bones are popping out, and uh, I, I, I like one woman where he just grabs her wrists and just <laughs> it breaks both of her forearms so the <laughs> yeah. bones stick out her elbows. <laughs> What the Dude, fuck? Anytime you have the, anytime I see like bones sticking out, that's where it, that's that's when it crosses the line of like fun to grisly. <laughs> like, Dude, the opening scene rough. of the movie has it. The opening, yeah. like, the one of the first characters yep. you meet in the whole movie gets his arm snapped in half. Yeah, and we haven't even talked about that because that was like that was a bloodbath. <laughs> like that what was a, great. What a, what a goofy scene. That that like gothic castle. That's a psychiatrist 
or psychiatry hospital, mental hospital. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like outrageous, cartoony. I can't believe this got like greenlit by a production studio. Yeah, and this whole movie was cartoony. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but uh, it, that scene did, it reminded me of the like alien autopsy scene in Independence Day, where like the alien comes to life, or even like the there's a scene. I think it's with Doc Ock in, in like Spider-Man 2. Um, but yeah, it's it's just kind of like there's a monster there and it's killing everybody, but you never really see enough of it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, uh, that was, it was, yeah, it was a cool opening scene. But I also was like, what the fuck is this about? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't get reintroduced to that, uh, that doctor until like 40 minutes later or so. Yeah, they definitely just like purposely hit a lot of the plot earlier in the story to reveal it later on. Which is kind of geology, like they that that happens, you know. Yeah, uh, I did like the uh, concept of like her miscarriages were due to him feeding off of her and like yeah. gaining it's power so over up. time. It's like it's such a great yeah, story beat. Yeah, that's pretty wild. But they also said that Gabriel was dormant until she got her head, like until her like husband slammed her head against the wall, right. And that so woke like, him up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but how was he feeding on the baby's energy if he was dormant? He could be feeding passively. And maybe the, like by dormant they mean that's when he started taking over her mind again. Cuz I imagine, mm -hmm. well, yeah, I'm making excuses for I guess the plot doesn't really Yeah, there's need holes. To make yeah, sense. What I what I'm saying <laughs> doesn't matter. Like yeah, it doesn't yeah. affect how I like that. I'm not like uh, it's not getting points off because it has like weird plot holes that I don't actually give a shit about. I would rather a movie full of plot holes that's entertaining and is like flexing its craft the way this is like it's if this wasn't as well made as it was it would have been a chore to get through it's because it's so long we haven't talked about that it's two hours long it yeah. could have been a half hour shorter yeah, yeah. it could have could have could have edited a little bit that's all right you didn't okay. need any of the stuff with her mom like besides like besides the funny scene where she falls through the roof um, it didn't really necessarily play into it because the sister finds the paperwork where it's just like oh this is her mom um, and they kind of figure out more stuff about it. I don't know. You just kind of didn't need it. But... Yeah. I like how they just killed her anyway. Oh, I know. She was in a coma at the end. That's right. It was a fake kill. Yeah. I guess she was still in a coma. Yeah. She was alive at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this Now, question. Because in that scene, I swear to God that Gabriel shoots the sister and you see her like yeah. brain spray, like spray yeah. across the wall. Yeah. But she's alive at yes. the end. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was her taking over his mind and projecting uh, what she oh. wanted him to see. Like, that was the very first instance of her manipulating him. Gotcha. Yeah. At least that's how I took it. Yeah. Yeah, I think no, that's that makes sense because then yeah. she puts him in like a brain prison. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. She I, the, the ending, the, the like resolution of the movie uh, was weak, but um, everything leading up to it was <laughs> was just insane. So. I don't care if it ends kind of like on a very low energy climate, like, you know, moment, but. I mean, it's got like Lord of the Rings is kind of a weird ending, but like, how do you end something like that? Like after everything that we've seen in this fucking movie, I don't, I don't know how you tie it up nicely. Although I Honestly, will say. Honestly, you just ended with everybody being dead. <laughs> like, yeah, I was yeah. about to say that. I was hoping that it was just going to be a bleak, bleak ending. That's where I thought they were going too. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, damn, they're going to kill everybody off. Well, they definitely set it up for a sequel. He was like, I, I'm going to reemerge. She was like, that's cool, but I'll be ready. You know, like <laughs> sequel material. And they also had that, like the light at the end. It didn't turn on, did it? But it like you could hear like a flickering sound. It was guys, flickering. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. the energy was still there. Right. So, so is it was the lighting, the light stuff, like, is it pooling energy from the electricity to, to basically, um, you know, like uh, take over her body? Is that the idea? I, I, I have no idea how I that's, <laughs> I, I have a feeling. So I read the electricity as being a pretty on the nose kind of like, I thought that, did you guys get like a metaphor vibe from this movie? Did this feel like a, like a moral tale at all? Cause it did to me. In a pretty big way. Uh, just like it, it's about a protagonist who has a darker side who she thought was removed from her, but then slowly over time comes creeping back in. And then it takes this like traumatic event to shake the trauma up in her life. Mm -hmm. And then it, it happens that this evil force that is wreaking havoc in her world is transmitting to her through electronics and electricity. It felt a lot like the like political environment we have today and like the internet and like QAnon and like weird techno cults and shit like that. It felt a lot about it. It to me, I read the movie a lot as 
our protagonist is America realizing that it has this really bleak, dark underbelly that it it is horrified of and it can't turn away from because they it is also them and they have to deal with that somehow. Uh, yeah, I, I can of, see what you're yeah. like. Yeah, so it's kind of like we we thought we got rid of all this, um, but in fact we just shoved it under the surface. And even the way that like kills most of the second half of the movie all the kill sequences is our protagonist locked in place and they're kind of forced to watch as horrible shit happens and it i mean it definitely to me gave me vibes of like i've i've been awake late at night you know scrolling through the news and seeing firsthand footage of people getting shot dead like and you you are kind of just frozen and you can't believe this is you know what it is but yeah i don't know it, it definitely feels like a modern meditation on like electronics and what they're doing to us and like the trauma that comes from that uh, hmm. Only with people getting their arms snapped in half. It's <laughs> fucking great. Yeah, I don't know. Nice. James Wan, uh, he, he's, what, one of eight directors to have more than $1 billion grossing movie? Uh, he's a talented guy. I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he was given a blank check to make a you know streaming release, next big horror release, if he had stuff like this on his mind. I'm going to have to see if I can seek out interviews with him and see if this is what he was thinking about. I mean, this, this movie itself, like, it... Definitely seems like he was given a, a a budget and just said, "Do whatever you want." Like you, you made Aquaman. Was, so. was this <laughs> was this his first was movie after like Furious Seven and Aquaman? Is this his like, yep. return to horror? Yeah, this yeah, is his return after Aquaman. Yeah, yeah, it kind of reminds me of like Raimi coming back to horror with like uh, Drag Me to Hell. Like it mm, seemed like it's it was kind of bonkers. Yeah, it was just like he yeah. was just like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm just doing whatever. Like it was like he used all of his trademark skills but then he like turned it on its head a little bit you know just ramped it up even more so he did what he did saw um he did that dead silence he did most conjuring. of the saw movies yeah conjuring insidious uh fast and the furious aquaman do you think this is do you guys think this is the best james wan movie i don't i don't know about that uh I, haven't I still seen... love saw one I, I that still has a really yeah. really soft spot in my heart i think I he just did he only did the first one, right? I don't know if he did any. No, of them. he did like four or five of them. <sighs> nah, he did. He 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 produced on a, a bunch, but I think he only directed one or two. Oh, I could have sworn he directed. Might not even be wrong. I could be wrong. I think Conjuring, he did like two or three. Conjuring, he, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he did. Con yeah, Conjuring one and two were definitely him. Um, I guess I, I should ask in his horror output then, where do you think this falls for you guys? Insidious, Conjuring, Saw this uh i i mean i i my personal favorite of his horror is probably the conjuring yeah um it's just it's it's really well done i actually think conjuring 2 is better so let me change that conjuring 2 nice. um but but saw is is fantastic um insidious it, it really starts off super strong with the first couple and then kind of gets a little ridiculous but um yeah it's uh it it, it it's as good as uh, yeah, it's hard to say because <laughs> it's not a bad movie, but I feel like uh, a couple of his other ones are, um, are more more structured. Maybe like uh, yeah, I don't know. I have to think about it. How to kind of describe that more during uh, uh, ratings, but yeah, yeah, I'd have to go with Conjuring too. I think it fits his style a little bit better. Um, that's not to say that this movie. I, I really had a good time with it, but I think he was like dialed in uh, on Conjuring at least the first nice. two. Yeah. Half this movie felt like a Conjuring movie anyway. Like, anything that was in the house was shot very Conjuring. Yeah, the beginning, there's a lot of creaking doors, a lot of dark hallways, a lot of, like, suspense you know, or tension Dude, being built. Uh, when, when the fridge door opened, I was like, oh, that's creepy. <laughs> 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 like, something so simple as just a fridge door opening because it's dark and you just see the light from the fridge. Like, it, it was... That was cool. Yeah, I did. thought that that tunnel sequence when the when the tour guide who turns out to be the killer's mom uh, gets kidnapped. That whole sequence tricked me out. That was, that was pretty great too. He's so good with light. He's so good at making light scary. God damn. That was the thing with the the fridge sequence you were just talking about. There's a shot where the actor turns around and it just shows like almost a Spielberg shot of just his open eyes and you see the light from the fridge before you see the fridge being opened. It was freaky. Nice. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Uh, uh, the mom. She, um, she just unplugged all the lights and then she heard like a sound in the dark and she walks to the sound without turning the lights <laughs> back on. <laughs> I mean, that's what built attention if she, you know, and then she finally runs and turns the lights on. Yeah, but yeah. It doesn't good. save her. Yeah. I thought, I at first I was like, wait, who, is that a different 
character or is this somebody <laughs> yeah. they already because it was just i thought it was, the, I, was our, I thought it was well. our main character at first because it was just like i do that with everybody you know um <laughs> and i was like oh no they just introduced a new character and it took me a second to like catch up well it doesn't help that our protagonist and her mom both look really similar and then the killer in the movie is also is also the protagonist so they look very similar so it's three very similar long brunette long-haired brunettes yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're all intertwined yeah it, it got tough for me to tell them apart but you know one of them has a, a evil squid face so that made it easy <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> one of them's walking around with the backwards body <laughs> a little yeah i like how easier. i like how uh, gabriel would like uh what do you call it like he'd, he'd pop his arms out of socket you know, to, to make them yeah. where it's kind of cool. I am interested in rewatching this movie just because I, I wonder if, like, I think there was a, a shot where at one point, um, uh, the woman, not as the killer, but as herself is like looking at her hands and kind of cracking her knuckles a little bit. And I, mm. I remember wondering like, Oh, I wonder what, what's going on there. But then, yeah, at the end of the movie, when you hold, like kind of watch the whole transformation take place, like it almost like all of her joints are double. Like she can like pop them in and out of joint at will. Mm -hmm. Really creepy effect. I love the design of a killer that has a backwards body. Watching that thing run across the room was fucking terrifying. Such a cool, like a cool thing to watch. Yeah, so unpredictable. Cool. Yeah, it was confusing, but, and like disorienting at first too. You know, when you didn't know what was going on. Yeah, it was very fawn like. You know, like um, like Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and it's also just unsettling seeing a like humanoid figure with like backwards bent knees and That's stuff like thing. that. You know, yeah. it's yeah, because it's it's uncanny like it's a it's an un uncomfortable thing to look at how about the like a team crafting of the uh the the sword or the the knife <laughs> <laughs> that was so badass it's pretty great it's such i i miss it's been a while since i saw a horror movie that had that 80s kind of like here's how the killer gets his weapon like moment <laughs> yeah it was cool pretty badass pretty cool uh idea for a weapon too that he's some kind of like medical experiment trophy. yeah thing and he's yeah. using this like medical trophy mm. as a as a weapon it was pretty badass all right well we uh talked about this for a while what do you guys say we uh stab it the fuck to death with a with a, a, a doctor trophy <laughs> <laughs> time for the ratings so here on Stabby Stab, we give uh, ratings to movies by stabbing them from 1 to 10. 1 means we don't like the movie that much, and 10 means we love it so much we want to stab it all day. So um, also, I, I, I guess since this is a new release movie that people uh, can go out and watch right now or can stay in and watch right now, uh, I, maybe we should just tack on to our ratings whether or not you recommend that people watch it. I, I'm going to guess at what the answers to those are. But uh, Greg, how, how would you review this movie? How would you rate this? All right, movie? all right. Well, I would give uh, *Malignant* seven and a half stabs. Um, obviously, loses one, no nudity. Get out of here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I do think like the writing was a little sloppy. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the acting was subpar for kind of a big budget mainstream studio movie. Um, but the action was insane. The gore was great. Um, the, 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 just the, the monster itself. Um, every time you see it, uh, you get a little bit more of everything to it. And, and then at the end, it's just, it, it's just insane. Like, I don't know how to describe this movie otherwise. Um, I, I could see people bailing on it 40 minutes in, uh, mainly because you get an awesome opening scene and then it just slowly starts like delivering a little bit of information or a little bit of action um, but yeah, if, uh, if you stick around for that whole 151 minutes, oh uh, it's, it's definitely worth it. it. Yeah. Like we said, it could, it could be trimmed. I think it could lose some stuff, but, um, if it was like a tight 95 minutes would be fantastic. But, uh, yeah. So seven and a half, uh, from me. Uh, how about you, Eric? I actually have written down. Oh, wait, oh, actually. Okay. Um, sorry, I, I would recommend going and seeing it. <laughs> I forgot Dan wanted that. Actually, uh, I should ask, would you say, like, if somebody was asking, uh, should I stream it or should I watch it in the theater? What would you say if you're saying you should go watch it? Oh, that's tough because, like, this would be insane to see in a crowded theater, but I also think going to see something in a crowded theater is in itself insane right now, so... <laughs> that's, that's a fair um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, like in a, in a normal world, I would say watch this in a the theater, but um, watch it at home. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so, sorry, uh, Eric, uh, how many stabs are you giving it? Uh, I also will, uh, will stab it seven and a half times. Uh, I don't know if I have too much more to add. Uh, yeah, I definitely recommended it. Uh, re- recommend it. Uh, enter- yeah, it was entertaining. It was fun. I didn't know where it was going. Uh, it was like four movies in one. It felt like a weirdo 80s, 90s movie that would fit right in with stuff that we would review. Uh, which I was not expecting from from uh, the <laughs> Conjuring director. You know, I did. I thought it was going to be a little more straightforward because I had no expectations going in. Uh, and I, when it started getting crazy, I was like, "Yes, this is." Because I was getting a little like, "Ah, it's going to be the standard," you know. Um, so I had a lot of fun with it. I definitely recommend it. And uh, I would. I think a theater would be preferable. But yeah, I agree with Greg. Like, it's probably not the time to do that if you care about your health. <laughs> uh damn what's your what's your take uh, i'm gonna stab this movie i will also recommend it and i will also say that i very much look forward uh to seeing this in the theaters uh credit theater sometime when it's safe i do want to seek it out uh because man this would be that like the police department scene in a big credit theater with a bunch of half drunk patrons it would be yeah. just so much fun so i do want to see it that way but yeah you're right yeah like down the road one day uh, I wholeheartedly recommended this movie. I loved it. I'm going to stab it eight times. I was thinking about going to nine, but I'm going to leave it at eight. Um, I have this, I always have this feeling when we stumble across a really awesome, really obscure horror or like thriller or whatever from the seventies or the eighties. I always wonder, did people back then know that incredible, like sc- when scream for help came out, did people know, <laughs> did, were people aware of how lucky they were to get to see scream for help in a theater mm-hmm. or did just pass them by? <laughs> And I, I also, I, I frequently wonder if, if there are movies like that that are coming out today that we I just have not heard of, but one day, 20 years from now, people will discover as hidden gems. Like, I think this is it. This is this is what that feels like. And it, it just so happened that this obscuro, extremely genre trope heavy, special effects heavy, gore-tastic, hard R-rated, like nonsense that we love. <laughs> Had, like it came out at the right time, like right when I kind of needed a movie like this, mm-hmm. um, by a really talented filmmaker that elevated all the material he was working with. Like it was so beautiful to watch. All the the, the effects got cheesy, but it was all executed in a way where it, it just took itself so seriously that I got lost in it, and I really enjoyed it. It was great. And like I said before, it when you also watch it with with that idea in your head about like, oh, it's a tumor that's long dormant that's now coming back and like <laughs> essentially communicating via the internet. <laughs> like it, the metaphor also plays out really well and I just really enjoyed it. So thanks James Wan. Thanks HBO. I appreciate it. So eight stabs for me. I, 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 we didn't even talk about the prison cell scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, yeah. Like that, that's, that's as insane as like the whole police station scene like just when she just starts top. ripping her head back like open from the back and then gabriel's face comes through like come on it's so it's so fucking amazing yeah. so awesome yeah I, and it's one of those the that whole sequence like he, she's mur- he he is murdering like hordes of prisoners where i at first i was like oh these these poor women like they don't deserve to die but then by the end of the scene i was like send in more prisoners <laughs> don't don't stop killing <laughs> It was so fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure we mentioned that scene because it is it is another standout scene in the movie. Yeah, it's great. We're gonna say. Oh no, no. I, I was gonna say. Yeah, I just audibly was like, yeah. Like I actually screamed <laughs> at my television, like I was watching a sporting event or something. Um, yeah, Dan, and I totally agree with your your review. I and I, I probably hate to say this, but I do think this could be a cult like status film in the future. Like. Probably, it would fit yeah. in nicely at like a 24 hour horror fest or uh like a like a halloween viewing you know easily so yeah, yeah. Uh, well that was it that was a stabby stabby presents what are we calling this <laughs> fresh cuts fresh, fresh cuts, cuts. <laughs> <laughs> I, if only you knew how long we were throwing around really horrific name ideas for <laughs> what to call a stab themed new release talk but yeah fresh cuts <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, follow us on Instagram at StabbyPod if you want to find out what we're watching next for our normal release schedule. And hey, hey, if a new movie is coming out that you're excited about, or if you get like, uh, if you read something on Slash Film, you find out about some new horror movie that's coming down the pipeline, let us know if it's coming out soon. We watch new stuff too, you know? We watch, we like just, we just like movies here. Yeah, we just don't talk about it. <laughs> um, any, anything else? Am I leaving anything else out? Leave us five stars. Yeah. To review us on iTunes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, us- tell us, tell us if you have a uh, baby living in your in your skull. <laughs> Do you have a baby brain in your brain? 
Uh, and uh, I guess uh, you know what we like to say on uh, on Stabby Stabby. Don't forget to stab your friends with a with a doctor's <laughs> award. What did what did Greg call it? <laughs> <laughs> the doctor trophy? <laughs> yeah, doctor trophy. There you go. All right. What do you guys think? Couldn't get out of one episode without being made fun of. <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel, is Coming from me.